Hi everybody and welcome to this 21st chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. In this tutorial we'll be talking about the introduction into bean validation. So not all validation can be made at the front end. The front end can validate data like you've seen in previous chapters like checking for certain symbols like ats in emails or number of characters but the nature of the input has to be checked further than simple character selection. It must be checked if the email is valid or if the phone number is even reachable. These are validations that bean validation does best. So what we'll be talking about is using bean validation constraints, uh, validating non null and empty strings, and validating constructors and methods. So uh, bean validation on constraints. A constraint is defined as an annotation. There are many constraints, but here's an example of how they would be placed. So here are the variables first name and last name cannot be null. You can also place additional constraints on variables. This example limits the length of the string the variable can hold to 1 and the maximum of 16. Any validation fa failures can be handled with the h messages tag. Now to validate null and empty strings. Before continuing on, we have to make clear the difference between an empty string and a null value. An empty string is a string value with no characters. A null value is the absence of value. In other words, there is no value. This differentiation is useful when debugging code. Managed bean elements that take text are initialized with an empty string. This can become a problem when a user inputs no data as the at null, uh, not null will not work since it's an empty string. Of course, this is not what we want. To combat this, you can tell the Java server's implementation to treat empty strings as null values with the following. Now to validate constructors and methods. Constraints can uh, also be declared on constructors and methods. The constructor is pretty straightforward. The employee's name cannot be null over here. Um, uh, and But the set salary method is a little bit interesting. First, the salary cannot be null. So it can be greater than, uh, and it can be greater than six digits to the left and uh, two digits to the right. Then the currency must not be null and is validated using a custom validator called at valid currency. Then there's cross parameter constraints. So these constraints apply to multiple parameters. Here, the parameters in the employee constructor has the at consistent phone parameters and the at null constraints. Then there's adding method constraints to method return values. As you can see here in this example, this constraint applies to the return values of this method because this method has no parameters. Th thus, this cannot be a cross parameter constraint. But what if there were parameters? This creates an ambiguity which needs to be solved. Here, the manager uh, at manager constraint has its uh, target set to the return value, removing any ambiguity. We'll be seeing this more in depth in the later chapters, but until then, that's it for this tutorial about the introduction into bean validation. I'll be seeing you in the next tutorial on the uh, advanced topics of bean validation.